how to convert any REST API to GraphQL using three simple steps. My name is Roy, and in this recording, I'll be showing how to convert any REST API using the steps in CLI. So the three steps we'll be doing today will be demonstrated later on. But first, we can use the steps in CLI to convert any REST API to a GraphQL API. Also, you can use the steps in CLI to create a GraphQL API from a database or any other data source, even other GraphQL APIs. So how does it work? The first step is to install the steps in CLI from NPM. And for this, you can set up a new project directory in VS Code or maybe any of the other editors you might be using here. And in here, you open a terminal window. You can also use a standalone terminal window. And in here, you'll be in running steps at npm install, append the global flag, and running steps at. So by appending the global flag, you'll be installing steps in globally on your machine, meaning that you can use it from any project directory. So even if you set up a different project later on, you can still use the steps and commands from your command line. So this might take a couple of seconds to install. And the API we'll be using is the Google Books REST API, which is a free REST API that you can use without an API key. So the steps and CLI is installed. Always a good thing to double check it by running steps and version. And with this, it shows us both the version of steps and we're running and also the version of Node you're running because you need a JavaScript runtime in order to use NPM. So the API we'll be using is the Google Books REST API. It's a free API. If you go to developers.google.com, uh, go to books, you can find this API and you can also find how it works. And with this API, you can also perform a search for all the books in a Google Books directory. So here's an example where we're searching for Harry Potter. And then also you need to append the country code because if you're not running this, if you're not opening this API from a browser, Google has no way to determine which country you send the request from because if you open it from the browser, it will be looking at your browser stats and see where you're from. If you don't, you need to append the country parameter. So if you're a presenter, you can open this API request. You can also use the terminal to have a look at this API request, an example by using curl, as we'll do in a bit. And you can also use API tools like Postman. So let me head back to my project directory. In here, I could introspect this API by running a curl command. So curl is like sending an API request from your terminal. And this will return us the JSON data that we also saw in the browser. So it has information about Harry Potter. It has information about the sales info, the access info, the countries it's available in, and also a description of the book. So let me clear this terminal. So to actually transform this REST API into a GraphQL API, we need to be introspecting this REST API using the steps in CLI. So if you remember the curl command we run just, we can also run a similar command with steps and import, and then run steps and import curl, which will be importing the REST API as we saw before while opening it with the curl. So make sure to add the REST API here, including the country code parameter, press enter, and steps and will start introspecting this REST API endpoint. So the first thing it will do, it will ask you how would you like to name your endpoint? So maybe do something like Google Books. And then it will start importing the REST API endpoint and it creates a GraphQL file for us, which has all the different types for all the data that is present inside the REST API. You can see we have authors, we have ratings, we have descriptions, titles, all this information that you might want. You can see it also creates a query name, something that we can actually change later on. And the only thing I need to do here is deploy this API by running the GraphQL server. So I would be running steps and start. It will take the GraphQL schemas and deploy it to the cloud. So it will ask you if you want to sign up for steps in or if you want to use a public anonymous account. So for now, let's go for a public anonymous account. But if you choose to sign up for steps in, the advantage you get there is that your endpoint will be secured by an API key. So I press enter and now my API will be deployed to the cloud. And in a couple of seconds, you can find here that there is a deployed endpoint at which you can find your query. So I would be going to the browser. I would be going to this endpoint where I can find a graphical instance and graphical is an IDE for steps, is an IDE for GraphQL. 
And in here, we can actually query our API. So we can do my query, get all the information. So if I'll be heading back to my schema, I can find the information. My query has the return type root, which is somewhere in here. And you can see it has items, kind, and total items. So let me find out items. And let me get an ID for it. Maybe some other information as well. But first, let's get some of the things here, like country, US. And then our question, which is Harry Potter. So this will return a lot of data for me. And then of course, I also want to specify which fields are returned. So I go to query, I go to queue. I'm going to be finding out what my return type is, items. And then in here, I can see I have all this information. So maybe I want the volume info. So I go for volume info. And in here, I can find all the titles and descriptions for this endpoint. So instead of getting all the data that we saw before, this time I will only get the data that I specify here. And this is just one of the cool things you can do with StepSend and GraphQL together. And as you saw now, it's really easy. You only need three simple steps. You need to install the StepSend CLI, you need to introspect the REST API, and then finally you need to deploy it using StepSend Start. So if you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to the StepSend YouTube channel to be updated as soon as we post a new weekly video. So thank you, and I hope to see you again soon.